This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build your online presence. In my last video, we discussed the differences between open and closed cell polyurethane spray foam, their chemical compositions, physical properties, and performance. Today, we're going to cover the pros and cons of both types of spray foam. I'm going to incorporate your feedback and answer your questions from the previous video. I'll also discuss the one thing that absolutely terrifies me about this product. Let's start with the advantages of spray foam. R value. R value is the measure of resistance to the flow of heat. Open cell foam has a good R value of 3.5 per inch, but closed cell foam has an excellent R value of 6 per inch. However, the R value test ignores the air sealing properties of spray foam. It positively impacts all three forms of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. Spray foam is a high performance insulation product that is superior to traditional insulation. Air sealing. One to one and a half inches of closed cell foam can act as an air barrier, while three to three and a half inches of open cell spray foam acts as an air barrier. When applied properly, it can improve the air quality in a building. It creates an airtight structure that keeps moisture, allergens, and other airborne contaminants out. It can seal all gaps, even in awkward areas and hard to reach places. Spray foam can stop uncontrolled air leakage, which is the main source of energy loss. Energy savings. It can lower utility bills in your home by keeping conditioned air Inside, it is estimated to reduce heating and cooling costs by up to 40%. It has been called green or environmentally friendly because it reduces energy consumption, greenhouse gas emissions, and the HVAC requirements of buildings. Closed cell foam. Closed cell foam is impermeable to water. It can protect attics and crawl spaces from moisture. It can reinforce exterior walls and increase overall structural integrity of the wall assembly. It makes them more rigid and more resistant to compression and shearing forces. It can increase racking strength by up to 300%. Closed cell foam is good in areas prone to severe weather like flooding, storm surges and high winds. Lifespan. Spray foam has a long lifespan of up to 80 years. It has a lower thermal drift or loss of R value over time than traditional insulation. It does not sag, settle or deteriorate and is expected to outlast the life of a building. It is also not a source of food for pests, rodents, mold, mildew, and bacteria. Evolution. The spray foam industry is constantly evolving because it is under unrelenting scrutiny. It used to be made with greenhouse gases that contributed to the depletion of our ozone layer. Gases like CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons and HCFCs or hydrochlorofluorocarbons. Fortunately, those are not used anymore. Open cell foam uses water as a blowing agent, while closed cell foam uses a chemical with a very low global warming potential of just one. Before we move on to the disadvantages of spray foam, I'd like to share a little project I've been working on. Many people have asked me to share my scripts so that they can refer to them in essays and other projects. So I'm building a website called carbills.com to post all my building science content. I've decided to use Squarespace because of its easy customizable templates. They can support pages, galleries, blogs, commerce, and more. I can easily add and manage text, photos, videos, and comments. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Belinda Carr to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now for the disadvantages of spray foam. Cost. Spray foam has a high upfront cost, around three times more than traditional fiberglass insulation. The cost of both open and closed cell spray foam has fluctuated wildly over the past year because of raw material shortages and supply chain issues. A rough estimate is 50 cents to $1 per board foot of open cell spray foam and $1.50 to $3 for closed cell spray foam. A board foot is 12 by 12 by 1 inch volume of material. However, it is important to remember that you could see a payback in less than 5 years thanks to all the energy savings. Sound. It is not a very good sound insulation product. Open cell spray foam is 97% air by volume, so it has some soundproofing potential, but not as much as you'd expect. Unfortunately, it traps sound waves and creates a resonating chamber that seems to amplify mid-range frequencies, which are disruptive. 
the hardened foam also binds layers together which couples wall elements this can increase sound transfer stc a sound transmission class is a rating of sound isolation in a wall assembly the less sound measured going through the greater the transmission loss and the higher the numeric stc rating Closed cell foam has an STC rating of 36, while open cell foam is 37 to 39, far lower than rock wool or fiberglass. NRC or noise reduction coefficient rates how well a material absorbs or reflects sound waves. The greater the value, the better the material is at absorbing or reflecting sound. Once again, spray foam's NRC rating of 0.7 is lower than that of rock wool or fiberglass. R value. Since the R value test is biased towards fibrous insulation, spray foam may not meet the minimum code requirements. Installing 4 inches of open cell foam on the roof and 3 inches in exterior walls isn't enough in many cases. Thermal bridging. If you don't use a layer of continuous insulation on the outside of a building and only spray foam in between studs, those will act as a thermal bridge and reduce the overall performance of the wall assembly. Permanence. Scheduling spray foam installation is tricky because it must be applied after electrical and plumbing work. Once it's in, you can't make any changes. Spray foam adheres to the substrate it's sprayed on and it cannot be scraped off easily. Any renovations to the building structure in the future are going to be very difficult. I predict an HGTV series 30 years from now that centers on the destructive removal of spray foam in flipped houses. Environment Polyurethane spray foam is plastic, so many people think it is as bad for the environment as single-use plastic. They don't realize that this is a long-term use plastic that plays a vital role in the decarbonization of homes. It is not biodegradable and it will head to a landfill at the end of its life, but so does contaminated fiberglass, rock wool and other traditional building products. The difference is that spray foam lasts much longer and provides greater benefits during its life. Neither open cell nor closed cell spray foam are fire resistant. However, they do have some fire retardant chemicals. They charred and burned, but the flame was extinguished as soon as I pulled the fire away from it. Building system. A building acts like a system. Replacing one component will affect others. While new homes can be designed to take advantage of spray foam's qualities, existing homes may not. Homes with a gas furnace, fireplace or water heater draw combustion air from the attic. If the attic is sealed with foam, those appliances will not work properly and they can be very dangerous. Many people with sealed attics have noticed that vent hoods don't work, that the bathroom fan doesn't pull air out and that wet towels don't dry. The humidity levels inside such homes can be very high. Spray foam usually needs an ERV or energy recovery ventilation system, a fresh air ventilation system or a dehumidifier to draw clean, fresh air into the home and remove stale air. Health Concerns PPE, a personal protective equipment, is vital when using spray foam. Exposure to spray foam before complete curing can lead to asthma, sensitization, lung damage, breathing problems, skin and eye irritation. You must also wait 24 hours after application before entering a space without PPE. Preparation Spray foam is a very finicky product. Meticulous preparation is very important. You must make sure that the substrate is dry. Spray foam can pull back from the studs if it comes in contact with oil, grease, dust or other contaminants. Technique is also very important. If spray foam is undersprayed, it pulls away from the sides and allows air infiltration and reduces the R value. Overspraying can lead to messy floors and damaged studs. Ratio the ratio of raw materials is also very important. Most spray foam systems have a mixing ratio of 1 to 1, or 1 part isocyanate to 1 part resin blend by volume. However, since the two parts have very different specific gravities and viscosities, the drums may not empty at the same time. An excess of part A isocyanates will result in a glossy cell structure, brittleness or friability. It will easily break into smaller pieces. The density will also be higher than the manufacturer's specifications. An excess of part B resin will result in a soft and spongy foam with a lower density than the manufacturer's specifications. Speed The speed of the reaction is important when applying spray foam. 
a reaction that occurs too fast or too slow can affect the cell structure, density, adhesion to the substrate and layers, surface texture and tensile and compressive strength. But the one thing that absolutely terrifies me about spray foam is that it is not a DIY friendly product, despite what the novices on YouTube tell you. It is very messy and requires a lot of experience to get it right. Mixing the chemicals is an exact science with a small margin of error. Spray foam experts are trained for weeks on the proper methods of spraying. They know how thick the layers need to be and how to test whether it is curing properly. I was told that spray foam raw ingredients have a shelf life of just six months and that they can smell after that best buy date. There are specific blends to use in summer and in winter. Using the wrong product at the wrong time of the year, at the wrong humidity and or temperature levels will cause delamination and improper curing. The cheap DIY spray foam you can buy at your local hardware store is a watered down consumer grade product that will not last as long. Remember that tub refinishing video I made a while back? The two part epoxy started peeling off after a year. Well, at least that was visible. I'm worried about spray foam deteriorating or off gassing behind a wall without you knowing. I was on the fence about spray foam's future in the construction industry until I visited Ambit's lab here in Dallas and spoke to the chemist. I now have a whole new respect for the product. Unfortunately, there are a lot of misconceptions about it and false articles on the internet about how spray foam is destructive because it releases greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. The industry is under constant scrutiny and pressure. They have to spend a big chunk of money on R&D compared to traditional insulation, even though the embodied energy of the latter is much higher. Just like with any other insulation product, spray foam has its advantages and disadvantages. And it's not right in every instance. If long-term building performance is important to you, then maybe it's something you should consider. Let me know what you think about spray foam and if you have any personal experiences you'd like to share. I'll link my Patreon page in the description if you can support me and really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone already supporting me. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.